close to 615. I think we're waiting on a few more people. Am I live now? Yeah. I guess you can all hear me. I can hear myself. So, <clears throat> well, let me officially welcome you to the 2024 Conway, Arkansas Scriptorium. This is our third event here in Conway, and we are delighted to have you here. Uh, we are thankful to God for your sacrifice, not only to come, as I mentioned earlier, but also to put time into memorizing um, considering God's word and, and really thinking about Jesus. Isn't that a wonderful thing? The book of Hebrews is all about Jesus, as, as we're going to, to see tonight. And so uh, I've mentioned the restrooms, of course, in the back right there, and then there's some throughout the building there, if you need. Uh, <clears throat> but we are 
We're delighted to have you here. We actually uh, are doing something new for the first time. We are live on YouTube right now. So uh, we have some friends that have not been able to make it. They were here last year and then some other friends that were here a couple years ago. And I just remembered who those friends were. And so I'm going to text them and tell them we're live on YouTube. Because I was trying to remember all day, who was I supposed to tell? And I remembered two families, and I forgot the other one. So <clears throat> for those of you who are joining us, give me just a moment. Uh, Heather, where is Elia? You know what I need you to do is I need you to figure out how to get that to Christopher, the link for the uh, YouTube uh, video. So I don't know if they're on Facebook, but this is also on Facebook. Uh, I've got a link on there. So <clears throat> thank you so much for being here once again. Um, parents, you have made a wonderful investment in bringing your children and teaching them the word of God. There is nothing greater that parents can do for their children than instructing them and encouraging them in the word of God. And so that's a great encouragement uh, to us to see parents doing that. And uh, we know that God's word will not return void and he will accomplish his purposes through this event. So we also wanna say thank you to Pickles Gap Baptist Church. This is our first time ever to use the building and uh, we're grateful. Uh, I, I've shared with maybe one or two of you that uh, I just happened to drive by and we needed a building and so I knocked on the door and the pastor was in his office and I introduced myself, told him what we were doing and said, is there any possibility that we could use this facility? And uh, he was so gracious and so kind to allow us to do that. So as we've met a few times so we could work out the logistics, every time I've said to him how much we appreciate the use of the building, he has returned that with how much he appreciates that we're doing this and letting them serve us. And, and what a great attitude, right? He said, we want to use this building for the glory of God. And so they were very grateful to us for doing this. And so that, that was encouraging. Uh, why do we do scriptoriums? <clears throat> well, because first of all, we love the word of God and we want the word of God to spread. Our, our goal when we started doing this back in 2015 was to encourage people in the local churches to, to memorize the word of God because it's almost a lost thing today, sadly, in the churches. And so that was our goal to encourage people to go back to their own community, to their own church and encourage that. And, and there have been some that have done that even here among us today. <clears throat> um, some, some people who have not even been to one of our events back in Florida, the Ots have some friends that are working on setting up a scriptorium. And so we've, we've been helping them with that as well. So <clears throat> We believe that the word of God is life-changing and powerful. So that's why we do this. Um, so tonight, we're going to we're going to get a lot in tonight. We're going to sing a few songs to start with. And then we are going to, <clears throat> uh, we're going to have a workshop. We call it just a brief overview of the book of Hebrews. Then we will recite the book of Hebrews. We'll get the whole thing done tonight. And, you realize that you can actually read through the whole book of Hebrews in about 45 minutes. And so we'll recite the entire book tonight. <clears throat> then uh, we will have our first round of the scripture challenge rounds. So for those of you who have participated or seen this before, it's a very fast paced and, and fun way to encourage learning the word of God. And then after that, we are going to wrap up with ice cream sundays back where we had our dinner. Does anyone like ice cream here? Okay, a few, a few. All right, so uh, we are, we're, we're very glad to have you here tonight. So I wanna pray and ask the Lord's blessing on our event this weekend. So let's do that together and then we will look into God's word after we sing. Almighty Father and God, we are grateful for who you are. Lord, you are the you are the creator of all things. Lord, not only that, you have given us your son, the Lord Jesus, who willingly came to this earth and did your perfect will. 
And then he willingly laid down his life on the cross, shedding his blood. Father, what a delight it is to know Christ. Father, we're grateful tonight that we can gather around your word to learn about Jesus, to worship Jesus. Our desire as Christians, for those of us here who know Christ, is, is to be more like Jesus. Father, our desire is that everyone in this room would come to know Christ if they do not know him. So would you work in every heart, even those that are listening online, that they would be challenged and encouraged in the things of God and also to believe on the Lord Jesus. So, Father, we bless you. We thank you. We love you. We look forward to that day when Jesus comes. Tonight, we ask that you would be honored as we give attention to your word and seek to exalt our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, we pray, for the glory of your Son. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand together, and we are going to sing a few songs. The first one is, O Church Arise. So I, I trust many of you know that. We've got the words up here as soon as I start it. Look at this a second. See if this this works here. It's not coming up yet. Where's my faith at? She's the one who come on up here and look at it. All right. Give us just a second. One other way. <laughs> Why don't you check the songbook and see if it happens to be in there? I don't know that this would be in there. <clears throat> or you can pull it up on your phone. <laughs> How many know this song? Too many. Okay, let's go to our second song, which I can't put the words up, but this is easy. If you were here last year, you sang this, and if you weren't here last year, you will learn this very quickly, okay? It is actually word for word from John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So those of you who remember it from last year, sing out, and we'll, we'll go ahead and sing it through a few times. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father, but by me. Okay, you got that down? That's pretty easy. What a wonderful truth, right? He is the only way. In a day when everyone wants to tolerate and, and be accepting of all the different ways that are out there, Jesus said, I am the only way to the Father. Let's sing that once more. We go through it twice. <laughs> Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes. 
Some of you might remember this. It's 2 Peter 3.18. You have that? 2 Peter 3.18. How many of you remember this? But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, you'll learn it because we'll, we'll go through it a few times. This is, remember the children, especially, amen. Remember that, some of you? Okay, here we go. We have some uh, technical experts here. We're going to try one more thing and see if this works. And if not, let's see. Not a show. How did it begin? Did it work? It worked. All right. Okay. <laughs> Well, as you know, we're here to recite the book of Hebrews uh, over, over today and parts tomorrow. We'll, we'll be reciting the, the stories from Hebrews chapter 11. So what I always like to do is just give a brief overview of the book of Hebrews. I hope that you've been reading through it as well as memorizing your passage because this is just such an amazing book. I remember probably close to 30 years ago. Sad to say, I had a degree in Bible, and I remember I started pastoring a small church in Wisconsin, and I came to the book of Hebrews, and I thought, I just don't understand this book. I just, it just didn't seem to make sense. And uh, since that time, I began to study it back then and, and began to understand it. And now it's probably one of my favorite New Testament books uh, because the message is all about Jesus Christ. The message is all about Jesus Christ. And, uh, See if I can get this. This is just not cooperating here tonight. Uh, 
that's up there. Can it work? Yes, it is not. Give me just another second here. Resume slideshow. Anything changing up there? This is really interesting. Okay, well, you don't get to see the slides, but I will see the slides, and that's what's going to count. So, the, the, the real theme of the book of Hebrews is I, I call it the preeminence of Jesus Christ. The preeminence of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is superior. He is excellent. He is above all other things. He is the one to whom we owe everything. And as I was studying the book of Hebrews, even thinking about this, um, this teaching tonight, the thought came to my mind, uh, the book of Colossians. I'd never seen this parallel before, but let me read to you from the book of Colossians. Speaking of Jesus, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Did you notice a lot of similarities in that, in that quote from the book of Colossians with the book of Hebrews? I mean, the themes are just parallel. There's talk about the blood, the superiority, or the preeminence of Jesus Christ. I remember hearing a sermon years ago. It was probably at least 38 or so years ago. So if you can remember something from the sermon 38 years ago, that was pretty good, right? And it, it was actually a, a young man. I don't think he was even 20 years old, but he was preaching from that passage in Colossians. And he said, Jesus isn't looking for a place in your life. He's not even looking for prominence. He doesn't even want to be like first place in your life. Jesus is to be preeminent. He's over everything. It's not like, you know, you know, to become a Christian, it's not like you just add Jesus into your life. No, Jesus is over every area of your life. He is now your Lord and Master. And that's what this book of Hebrews is really teaching. Jesus is preeminent because God has spoken to us through Jesus. And so you better listen to Jesus, right? Because he's above the angels. And so that's the theme of the book of Hebrews. What I like about the book of Hebrews, many things, but the book of Hebrews emphasizes two aspects of who Jesus is. It emphasizes, it starts right in chapter one with what element of, of who, what aspect of who Jesus is. Who wants to tell me from chapter one? What do we learn about Jesus in chapter one? He is, creator. he's the creator. He's the Son of God. He is God, right? Your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. So Jesus is divine. And that's clear throughout this whole book, right? He's, he's the one who created all things. So we learn about both the deity of Jesus Christ, but we also learn about the humanity of Jesus Christ. Just as Hebrews 1.8 says, your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. Hebrews 2.14 tells us that since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself also likewise partook of the same, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil. So Jesus, we learn in this book, is both divine and human. Or as the old creeds used to say, he's truly God and truly man. And you know what I've learned through the years? Uh, that a lot of people... and Think about what I'm about to say here. A lot of people 
don't really feel like they can relate to Jesus very well. Just stop and think about that. I've had this conversation at least 200 times, and that's not an exaggeration. People just don't feel like they could relate to Jesus very well. Why is that? Well, we emphasize in our day the, the divinity of Christ, and we should. He is divine. But there is not much emphasis, oftentimes, on the humanity of Christ. Remember what Hebrews says? Someone quote, Someone will be quoting it here this evening, right? He was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. So those temptations that Jesus faced were real temptations. And he overcame those temptations. How? Well, oftentimes, in, you know, in seminary, the teaching is, well, because he was God and he couldn't sin. Well, truly he was God, but he overcame those temptations by the power of the Holy Spirit, depending on his Father and leaning on and trusting the Word of God. How are you and I to overcome temptations? Depending on our Father, led by the Spirit of God, leaning on the Word of God. So Jesus is someone we can relate to. That's the point of the book of Hebrews. He took on flesh and blood like we have. So the humanity of Jesus Christ is an important thing in this book. A little background, of course, the author of Hebrews is unknown. I mean, people speculate, they say this, they say that. I, I'm not sure we're going to leave it at that. It was most likely written between 63 and 65 A.D. I believe it was definitely written before the destruction of the temple in 70 A.D., because he talks about that old covenant, which we'll look at tomorrow, is ready to vanish away. Once the temple was destroyed, there were no more sacrifices. And so the purpose in this book is really to encourage those Jewish people who had put their faith in Christ to press on. Because the temptation for them was to go back to Moses and the law. Who is this Jesus? See, that's what family and friends would have been telling them. Go back to to Moses and the law and the sacrifice, because they, those have been around for thousands of years. This Jesus, who is he? So the writer of Hebrews is encouraging them. Those who had at great cost already suffered the loss of many things are being tempted to go back. And the writer of Hebrews is saying, no, you can't leave Jesus. He's better. He's better than the angels. He's better than the priests. He's better than the sacrifices. He's better in every way. He is superior. So that's the point of the book of Hebrews to encourage these people. So we start out with the superiority of Christ in chapters 1 through chapter 8. He's better than the prophets. Jesus is better than the angels. Jesus is better than Moses. Jesus is better than Aaron. He has better promises. There's a better sanctuary. Jesus is the better sacrifice. You see, on every level, Jesus is better. And so from that truth that Jesus is preeminent, Jesus is superior to everyone, to everything else, the writer of Hebrews exhorts his hearers with these sorts of phrases. And the whole point is, as you're listening to the book of Hebrews, you're going to hear these things. You want to focus in on it. He exhorts them to draw near to God and hold fast. Don't turn away. Don't turn away. He encourages them to run the race with patience or endurance, right? This is, this is what we're supposed to do. This is the Christian life. It is a race. It is a battle. We live in a time and in a place in America where Christianity is just something you sort of add in, like I mentioned earlier. But that's not biblical Christianity. This is a fight, right? What did Paul say at the end of his life? I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. And so this is what the writer of Hebrews is doing. He's exhorting them to continue on. But it's also interesting because in the book of Hebrews, many of you know this, that this book has so many, what? You know what word I'm looking for? A lot of warnings, right? A lot of warnings in the book of Hebrews. There's a warning against drifting, against departing, against disobedience, against dullness, against despising, against defying. So this book is indeed a word of exhortation to those, that from Hebrews 13, 22, to those who have professed faith in Jesus Christ. If you're here tonight, I want to exhort you 
Press on. Amen. Press on because this world that we live in is an enemy to God. Yes. They do not want you to follow God. I mean, you turn on the news. You hear about God? No, you don't because they don't care about God. This world system is an enemy with God. And yet he gives solutions in what we're supposed to do in each of these. Against drifting, give more earnest heed to the things which we've heard. Exhort one another daily. Think about that. How are we supposed to be exhorting one another? On Sundays when you come together for a church, we know daily, he says. Why? Lest you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Be diligent in believing and heeding the word of God. Against dullness, grasping the first principles and then pressing on to spiritual maturity. Against despising, hold fast your confidence in Christ and believe with endurance. And then against defying, look diligently to the grace of God and serve him acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So the focus is always on Jesus Christ. And we're going to go through, I don't have time right now, we're going to go through in our quizzing round some of the titles and descriptions of Jesus Christ. So you'll see a number of them. Let me wrap up by saying this. A uh, number of slides here that I have on my, my presentation here. That the gospel is clear in the book of Hebrews. Think about the book of Hebrews. Maybe you don't think the gospel in the book of Hebrews. It's, it's, it's here from beginning to end. Because we learn of Jesus. He's God. We learn that Jesus became man. He is our high priest. He is the apostle and high priest of our confession. And he came to offer himself as the perfect sacrifice, the spotless Lamb of God. We also learn about his death and judgment to come, right? That's part of the gospel. Jesus Christ died. He shed his blood for our sins. And then we see in this book the need to count the cost. We live in a day, once again, where there isn't much cost to follow Jesus, is there? Pray this prayer, ask Jesus in your heart. What about the cost? Jesus said, you, you don't build the tower unless you sit down and count the cost first. Here's the cost. And we learned it from Moses' life, right? He chose rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin because he, he, he considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking to the reward. So my question as we kick off the recitations here in just a few minutes is, we can't lose sight of Jesus. And you personally, each one of you here, I, I wouldn't assume that just because you're here at this Bible-related event that every single person here is a Christian. So my challenge to you is, have you personally believed in Jesus Christ? Can you say with confidence, not because of something you've done or because of who you are, but can you say with confidence, by God's grace alone, because I have trusted in Jesus Christ, I have turned from my sin, I have repented, I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I know that Jesus is my hope tonight. Can you say that? If not, that's really the most important thing about this whole event, that you know Jesus because you can come to one of these every year for the next 50 years if you live that long. But if you don't know Jesus, what does it matter? On the day of judgment, do you know Jesus? Do you have faith? Because many of us could probably quote this verse. But without faith, it is what? It is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So do you know Jesus? If not, I plead with you tonight. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Humble yourself before God. There is no other way. There is no other way to the Father but through him. Jesus Christ. I, I got a letter from a, a missionary recently. and Here's what they said at the end of their letter. Jesus Christ, friend, the only cure for the human heart is Jesus Christ and his wonderful gospel. The blood he shed once and for all on a rough cross outside of Jerusalem is God's remedy for your sin and mine. The gospel is what God has done for our sinful hearts. 
Make much of Jesus to yourself and to the world. There is no other hope for the soul. There is no other medicine for the heart. There is no other cure for the conscience. Jesus is the answer. He is better than anything the world has to offer. Amen. Well, we are going to take just a moment and move a few things here. And then we are going to begin our recitation of the book of Hebrews. And the way that's going to work is whoever has the first section is going to come up. And so pay attention to where you are. Um, and uh, give the reference when you start and when you're done with your passage so that we'll know who the next one is to come up. And uh, you can use this microphone, I believe, should be on. Is this microphone on? Okay. Um, so if you would like to use the microphone, if you don't use the microphone, speak up because we we want to hear. We want to hear your recitation. Now, one thing I forgot to mention in my emails is most of you already know this, but everyone should have a prompter. Does anyone not know what a prompter is? Don't be afraid to raise your hand. It's someone who's going to help you if you forget your next line. Okay. And what we've learned about prompting is this: when someone, you know, is delayed. They, they don't know the next word. Don't just give them one word prompt. <laughs> we did that in the early days of scriptory. The. And. No, give a three or four word prompt. This is not a performance. You know what? If, if you forget a line, it, it, it's okay. We had, a, we had a, a man years ago in Kansas City who came and he, this is what he did for a living. He went around and quoted books of the Bible and he was in the middle of Acts chapter 5 going through one through nine, he was quoting the whole section, and in the middle of five, he just like lost, couldn't, couldn't come up with it. So it's okay. Um, just do your best in the glory of God. And then when you're done, we usually like to give a brief round of applause for the person, for the effort that they put in, and go back to your seat, and then wherever you are, just come up, and we'll recite the next passage. So my family and I are going to do Hebrews chapter one. Does everyone know Let's say, who's on Hebrews 2? See your hand. Okay, Hebrews 2. So have a prompter, and that person can sit near the front uh, with their Bible open if you need a, a prompt, or, you know, uh, we'll do that. So let's have my family come up. I'm going to move this out of the way. Hebrews 1. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by, by his Son, Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God, and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. And when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son, he says, Your name, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And 
You, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. And to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits, sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? Hebrews 1. Hebrews 2, 1 through 9. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by the angels was steadfast, and every disobedience, transgression, and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how can we, how can we neglect so great salvation? which of the first was spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Uh, but one but one in a certain place testified and said, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man which visiteth him? Thou madest him. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, thou crownest him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of his hands. Thou hast Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. And for he had not put for he had put all things in subjection under him. And he left nothing. He left nothing. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not all things put under him. But we see Jesus. Who is a little lower than me and just found his glory in him on me. Okay, I left out something important. Thou makest him uh, a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, and is, and by the grace of God, taste death for every man. For whom and by whom all things exist, and bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all those who, through fear of death, were subject to life while slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Hebrews 2, 10 through 18. Hebrews 2, 
Hebrews 3, 1 through 6. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calm, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who is faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also is faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been kind and worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Wait, 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 wait. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house, if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. Hebrews 3, 1 through 6. Hebrews 3, 7 through 19. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for forty years. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, In, in my heart, they always. and said, They always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. <laughs> For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. Hebrews 3, 7 to 19. Hebrews 4. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left to us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. For they which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of another day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works, and in this place, after so long a time, as it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of sword and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither, it, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. For all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4.
Hebrews 5. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and for them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, and also for himself, to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God. As was Aaron, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. And he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications and tears and strong crying to him that was able to save him from death, and to whom that he feared, though he were a son, yet found he obedience to the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dual of hearing. For when for the time ye ought to be creatures, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are as such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone who useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth unto them that are of full age, and to them who by reason of you have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Hebrews 5. <laughs> not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of instruction about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. For land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful to those for whose sake it is cultivated receives a blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to being cursed and its end is to be burned. Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust, so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hebrews 6, 1 through 12. Hebrews 6, 13 through 20. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their Disputes and oath is final for confirmation. So when God 
desire to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath. So that by two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. A hope that goes before us, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And to him, Abraham apportions the tenth part of everything. He is first, by translation of his name, King of Righteousness, and then he is also King of Salem, that is, King of Peace. He is without father or mother or genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the Son of God, he continues a priest forever. See how great this man was, to whom Abraham the patriarch gave the tenth of the spoils. And those descendants of Levi, who received the priestly office, have a commandment in the law to take tithes from the people, that is, from their brothers, but these also are descended from Abraham. But this man, who does not have his descent from them, received tithes from Abraham, and blessed him who had the promises. It is beyond dispute that the inferior is blessed by the superior. In the one case, the tithes are received by mortal men, but in the other case, by one of whom it is testified that he lives. One might even say that Levi himself, who receives tithes, pays tithes through Abraham, for he was still in the loins of his ancestor when Melchizedek met him. Now, if perfection had been attainable through the biblical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need would there have been for another priest to arise after the order of Melchizedek, rather than one name after the order of Aaron? For when there is a change in the priesthood, there is necessarily a change in the law as well. For the one of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from which no one has ever served at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord was descended from Judah. And in connection with that tribe, Moses said nothing concerning priests. It is even it becomes even more evident when another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, who became a priest, not on the basis of a legal requirement concerning bodily descent, but by the power of an indestructible life. For it is witnessed of him, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7, 1 through 17.
makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood forever because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him because he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people. Since he did this once for all, when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Hebrews 7, 18-28. Hebrews chapter 8. Now the main point in what is being said is that we have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the majesty in the heavens and ministered in the holy places and in the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. So, too, it was necessary that this high priest have something to offer. Now, if he were on the earth, he would not be a priest at all. Since there are those who who offer the gifts according to the law, which is a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things. Just as Moses was warned by God when he was about to erect the tabernacle, he said, For see, that you make all things according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain. But now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry. By as much as by as much as he is also the mediator of a better covenant enacted on better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion sought for a second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, days are coming, says the Lord, when I will complete a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not like the covenant I made with their fathers. In the day I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, but they did not continue in my covenant. And I did not care for them, says for this is a covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After these days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their mind, into their minds, and upon their hearts 
I will write them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not say, everyone to his fellow citizen, and everyone to their brother, know the Lord, for all will know. From the least to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their iniquities, and their sins I will remember no more. When he, when he said a new covenant, he has made the first one obsolete. <laughs> But whatever is obsolete and passing away, or is growing old, is ready to disappear. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 8. <laughs> Hebrews 9, 1 through 14. Now, even the first covenant had regulations for worship in an earthly place of holiness. For a tent was prepared, the first section, in which were the lampstand and the table and the bread of the presence. It is called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a second section called the most holy place, having the golden altar of incense and the ark of the covenant covered on all sides with gold, in which was a golden urn, holding the manna, and Aaron's staff that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. Above it were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in detail. These preparations, having thus been made, the priests go regularly into the first section, performing the ritual duties. But into the second, only the high priest goes, and he, but once a year, and not without taking blood, which he offers for himself and for the unintentional sins of the people. By this, the Holy Spirit indicates that the way into the holy places is not yet open, as long as the first section is still standing, which is symbolic for this present age. According to this arrangement, gifts and sacrifices are offered that cannot take away the sins of the that cannot perfect the worshiper, but deal only with food and drinks and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until the time of reformation. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and bulls, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer, if they sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Hebrews 9, 1 through 14. Hebrews 9, 15 through 28. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that since a death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions which were committed under the first covenant, those who have been called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. For where a covenant is, there must of necessity be the death of the one who made it. For a covenant is valid only when men are dead. For it is never enforced while the one who made it lives. Therefore, even the first covenant was not inaugurated without blood. 
for when every commandment had been spoken by Moses to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of the calves and the goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God commanded you. And in the same way he sprinkled both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry with the blood. And according to the law, one may almost say, all things are cleansed with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Therefore, it was necessary for the copies of the things in the heavens to be cleansed with these. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, but... A mere copy. A mere copy. A mere copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor was it that he would offer himself often as the high priest. As the high priest enters the holy place year by year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once, at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment, so Christ also, having been offered once, to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await him. Hebrews 9, 15 through 28.
And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. Since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. For if we go on sinning willfully, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy by the mouth of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as defiled the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who has said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But remember the former days when, after being enlightened, you endured a great conflict of suffering, partly by being made a public spectacle through reproaches and afflictions, and partly by becoming sharers with those who were so treated. For you also showed sympathy to the prisoners and accepted with joy the seizure of your possessions. Knowing that you have for yourselves a greater and lasting possession. Therefore, do not throw away that confidence of yours, which has a great reward. For 
or you have need of endurance. So that when you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet in a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but are those who have faith to the preserving of their soul. Hebrews 10, 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old receive their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe is created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commended him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, and, and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith Abraham obeyed, who was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received the power to conceive, even when she was beyond age. Since she, she considered, considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore from one man, and him as good as dead, came descendants, as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand on the sea. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. That they had say such things to claim that they see their country, and truly, if they had been mindful that country from which they came out, they might have had an opportunity to have returned. But now they desire better, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them to see. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his own son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be made. He considered that God was able to raise him from the dead, for when he began to be speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob went down, thus each of the sons of Joseph. Bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions to turn his boat. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of him. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to be mistreated for the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not being wrath of the king, for he endured as of him who is invincible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. 
by faith he cast, they cast the threats as by drowning, which the Egyptians ascend to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith we have the prostitute did not doubt that those who were so few, because she had given us something to his house. And what more shall I say? For time of fell to tell of you. Barrett, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, brought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, remained strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to fight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Others suffered mocking with blood. And even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn aside. They were killed with the sword. They were about the skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in caves and mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not to trust. God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 12, 1 through 17. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which should easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who with the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, shining against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation that speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are removed by him. For whom the Lord loves he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as your sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more be in subjection to the father, father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us, as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it is the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness bringing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. God testified no. For you know that after, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Hebrews 12, 1 to 17. Hebrews 12, 18 to 29. For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched, and that burned with fire, and to blackness, and darkness, and tempest, and to the sound of the trumpet, and the voice of words. So that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded. 
And if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the heaven, saying, Yet once more I shake not only earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 18 through 29. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 1 through 19. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor above all. And let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Remember your leaders. Those keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace and not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sins are burned outside of the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate so that he might sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp, that we might bear the reproach he endured. For here, we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a praise to God, that is, the sacrifice of lips that acknowledge his name. Remember to do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Pray for us, for we are sure that we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things. I urge you the more earnestly to do this, in order that I may be restored to you the sooner. Hebrews 13, 1 through 19. Hebrews 13, 20 through 25. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, 
equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom we glory forever and ever. Amen. I appeal to you, brothers, bear with my word of exhortation, for I have written to you briefly. You should know that our brother Timothy has been released, with whom I shall see you if he comes to. Greet all your readers and all the saints. Those who come from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with all of you. Hebrews 13. What a great ending to a great book, huh? Amen. Amen. Thank you all for encouraging us. What a blessing that was. Amen. When was the last time you heard the whole book of Hebrews in one city? One time. What an amazing word we have. Well, thank you again for, for all the work that you've done. Well, we've got a number of things left to get to before the evening's over. Um, I want to say a word about our sponsors. We have um, two sponsors for this. One is Grace and Truth Books, and that is Rick and Liz. Rick stepped out for a moment, but uh, Liz, stand up for just a second. Liz is uh, Liz and her husband. Own <laughs> Grace and Truth Books here in Conway, Arkansas. It was actually an online bookstore for about 30 years. And they purchased it a couple of years ago and actually made it into a storefront, but they still have a great online business. And so in your bulletin, make sure you take one of these. There's their web address. And if you need homeschooling books, if you need Christian books, if you need Bibles, if you need gifts, this is the place to go. They ship across the country and they would be happy to help you out. So show your support for them. And then the other ministry, is Lighthouse Christian Ministries, which is the ministry that I run. Um, and so that's sort of the parent organization for the scriptorium. So um, again, thank you to Pickles Gap Baptist Church for letting us use their facilities. What a great, what a great place. Let's give them a round of applause. So, now we're gonna have a break in just a minute. Um, but I have Big announcement before that, okay? So let me step up here. Why don't you all stand up for just a moment? Just stretch until we've been sitting for a while. Well, for those of you who just recited, now some did not yet recite. Tomorrow you will be reciting, some of you will be reciting from the stories from Hebrews 11, which were so well presented this evening. You'll get to hear the whole story tomorrow. So those of you who are studying. But it's challenging, isn't it? You can, you can work for months and you stand up here and it's like, uh, where do you go? We have a joke in our family that uh, when you stand in front of everybody to quote, your mind becomes an instant thesaurus. You can think of all kinds of words, but not the word that you studied from your memory work. So, um, so you know how difficult that is to, 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 to memorize a, a chapter, right? And you, you did a great job, every one of you. And, uh, but this year, we did something different. Uh, scriptoriums did something different. You can have a seat now. I just wanted you to stretch it. Second, uh, we'll take a break in just a moment. We did something different this year, and uh, we decided, and my family is the we were the were the people behind scriptoriums.com. We decided what can we do that be a little bit different, really to encourage people to memorize scripture even more than just their chapter. Uh, most everyone here, I suspect, knows of the name Charles Spurgeon. Well, Charles Spurgeon, you may not know this about him, was incentivized to memorize scripture by his grandmother, who gave him money to do so. We didn't think of that hundred and some years ago. Anyway, so we've taken that concept, and you may be aware of this, but uh, we, we did our Hebrews challenge, and we said, 
if you will memorize a chapter a week from the beginning of the year and complete it by the scriptorium, you'll have memorized the whole book, 13 chapters, from January through um, April, middle of April. And we have 16 people across the country that have memorized the entire book of Hebrews. And, and so we gave a $50 cash reward to, to all of those who did that. Then we said, I'll tell you what, if you recite the whole book during the weekend of the scriptorium, meaning you got to keep in memory everything, and there's a certain allowed number of errors that you can, you can have, but if you, if you do that, we will give you another $50. So that's $100. And then there are eight people here. I think we're one chapter still yet to go. One person is one chapter. If my record keeping is correct. Eight people here have memorized the entire book of Hebrews and are planning to, if they haven't completed it yet, they still have a little bit of time, to recite the whole book this weekend, starting yesterday morning through tomorrow, the entire book from beginning to end for another $50. And then... We said, okay, we're going we're gonna to have a test over the book of Hebrews and everything that you've been studying. And so tomorrow morning, listen carefully, tomorrow morning, those who are have completed this whole thing, there's eight of you, will arrive at 8.15 tomorrow. So I'm sorry, parents, you got to get them here early. you got to arrive at 8.15, be here by 8.10, and there will be a test that those eight people will be taking. And then the top score there from that test wins $100, and then... 50, 75, and 25 dollars. Someone could very likely, unless there's a tie, walk away with 200 dollars from this event. So I want to just recognize those people. We have a uh, certificate for them. Um, it's the Hebrews Challenge Certificate of Completion. So when I call your name, I want you to come up and step right up. Actually, step up, come up on the platform here and uh, receive your reward. We're not going to give you the money yet because you might win more. So we're going to wait. The checks are written. We just don't know the amount yet. So when I call your name, I would like you to come up and receive your certificate. So we'll start with Hannah Hines.
Someone snap a picture real quick. Okay, great job. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take a break, but I need four to five or six young men to help me move tables. So the rest of you can take a break. Come back in about about 10 minutes for the, about 12 minutes for the scripture challenge rounds. And then after that, we'll have some ice cream sundaes together and then we'll head back for home. So. Okay, so let's put, yeah, we want four, one of four across. I got chapter one, but the rest of the We're going to do four tables across the I want to make five. Okay, so we can bring more here. So. Bro, there's literally five people watching. What's up, guys? What's up, people? Yo, what's up? Thank you. 
Okay, everybody, we need to get moving here. So have a seat. All right, everybody, why don't you have a seat and we will get started. Um, here, everyone, look at the screen. If you're in the challenge round, see your name on team one, two, three, or four. Team one table is here. Two, three, and four. Make your way to your table, please. Make your way to your table. As you know, we've been having some technical difficulties today. All right. And I will explain this to everybody. You know what? Why don't you move table one a little farther that way? Table two, table four, table a little bit We're going to have basically two or three on each side. So we need in between the tables. Okay? So let's see. What do we have here? How many do we have? Six. Six, okay? And we've got, okay, so we've got five here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, five here. And then we've got six here, okay? So what's going to happen, I'll explain this, but let me just explain how you're going to do this. So you have one buzzer. Turn your buzzer on underneath. There's an on-off switch there for you. And the way this works, the way this works is you're all going to have your hands near the buzzer, okay? Put your fastest people, the ones who are ranked a one or a two, put those closest to the buzzer. Don't put your hand on the buzzer. Keep your hand close, okay? The schemes are also up there. Keep your hand close, and then if you know the answer, you're going to buzz in. So let me, let me go over the rules here. Push. Yes. No, and I'll explain that now. So here's the rules. Here we go. Okay, over the next two days, over the next two days, we're going to have three rounds. This is round one plus our final rapid fire round. And you'll learn more about that tomorrow. Then there's seven categories in each round. So seven categories tonight. There's five questions in each category. Point values will increase per category. So as we go, they get higher. You'll see that in a moment. And you will lose the number of points for that question if you get it wrong. All right? That can be costly. Now we have a section that we added because of so many things that come up. Buzzing out. Anyone on the team can answer. If you get two wrong answers on your team, meaning an individual, so let's say you buzz in twice on this round of five questions and you get them both wrong, you can't buzz anymore. Because that we don't want one teammate to just, you know, like keep losing points for everything. <laughs> round one and two, if you buzz and get the answer correct three times, let's say the first three of five questions, you get it correct, you're out for that round because we want to give everybody a chance. Okay? So, y'all have to help me keep track. That, that category. That category, that five. Yeah, that five. five. Yeah. Now, round three tomorrow, there you can, you can, no maximum prep. You still are out after two rounds. All right? Buzzing in. Now, here's the rules. Pay attention. Once your team buzzes, someone on your team buzzes, 
And I'll see right here which team it was that buzzed. So don't answer until I call your team, okay? Once your team buzzes, there's no consulting. You can't give a tip to your teammate, okay? You can consult before you buzz in. So some questions no one might know, unlikely, but, and then you can talk as a team. And once you've decided on your answer, then you buzz in, but then there's no more consulting. If you get the wrong answer, your team can't buzz again on the same question. So you can't, like, you got it wrong, and oh, I, I know, I'll buzz in. Doesn't work out. Once you buzz in, you have five seconds to answer. And then what will happen is I will say, answer, and if I don't hear something right away, then I'm going to reset the timer, and then the next team can buzz in, one of the other teams. Yes, if you buzz in and you don't answer in the five seconds, you lose the points, okay? Um, here's how you qualify, and I'll explain this here. Total of three rounds, one tonight, two tomorrow, and then the rapid fire. All right, after two rounds, tonight's round and tomorrow's round, we're going to add up your scores. So whatever you get tonight, whatever you get tomorrow, all four teams, the top two teams in round three, it will go... The top team will go with against the bottom team in round three, and then two versus three, okay? In the rapid fire round then, so we'll have our places, one, two, three, and four. Everyone gets to do rapid fire, because that's a fun round. And so three will play four first, and that will be for the third place and fourth place. And then uh, winners of round three will play for first and second place, right? Now, each member of third and fourth place team receive a small, emphasize small prize, okay? Each member of the second place team receives a little bigger prize, little bigger prize. Remember from last year, if you were here, don't give it away. But each member of the first place team wins the biggest prize plus something new this year. I know you all can't wait. Oh, this is exciting. When I showed my wife, she was like, wow. Okay. Having said all that, having said all that, don't get your hopes up too high on the prizes, okay? No new cars, no thousand dollar checks. We don't have any money after we gave it all the way to the Hebrews calendar. <laughs> okay. Now, there's seven categories. Here's the names of them. Name that chapter. Who did that? Places, please. Hall of Faith. Names, titles, descriptions of Jesus. Where'd that come from? And back to the basics. Okay? And you will see the points here in a moment. Okay? I'll, t I'll tell you this. Those seven go like this. 25 points for the first five. 50, 75, 100. 150, 200, 250. Okay? We have our... Faithful scorekeeper back from last year. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> he would normally do this on the high tech screen, but it's one of those nights. So we got paper and pencil. Okay, is it showing up there? Are you ready? Now, the only thing is. Can we do a buzzer test? Oh, we're going to do a buzzer test in a second. But I feel like I need to be facing the other way. So, give me a second. All right. So I need to see this. So remember, my, my timer here has 15 seconds. So if no one buzzes in in 15 seconds, we're done. I just need to, you know what? There's a share back there. Can you give me that share back there, please? You have to be careful. Not that projector. It's like stacked on boxes and things. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you very guys. much. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. We're going to do a buzz around, Jack. Yes. For if you buzz in, can anyone from your team answer? Nope. Only the, person the person who buzzes. So you, you will find that you'll have one or two people that know a lot of answers. So give way. Okay. Let them. Okay. So let's do a buzzer check here. Team one, buzz. Okay, can you clear it? Team two, check. Got it. Team three, check. Oh, 
Got it? Oh, wait, try again. Oop, that one didn't work. Let's try it once more. Got it? And team four. Try it again. Okay, wait. Oh, if you hit it too hard, you break your buzzer. You're done. Yeah, okay. Put the, put the buzzer down. Is the light on? Okay, turn it off and then turn it back on. Did it come on now? Nope. Okay, let me have that. Sometimes batteries die. But thankfully, oh, we had it on the off position there. All right. All right, everybody, just hold on one second. Try this. Believe me, this is worth the wait, everybody. So. <laughs> okay, I have that. Let me step through here through the crowds. Careful. Like that. Careful. Careful, yes. Here's the key. Don't give the answer until I call your team name. And then the one who buzzed has to give the answer. All right? Because um, you might think you're the fastest and someone else is going to be. Yes. Uh, do we have to wait until the question is answered? You do. Okay, good question. Do you have to wait until the question is answered? What do you think? No. 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 But once I hear you, once someone buzzes, I'm done reading. Okay? All right. There will be 10,000 more questions. Remember, you got to call out the team that's going to answer. So don't shout okay. your answer out. Here we go. This is name that chapter. I will give you a word or phrase. You give me the chapter number. You don't have to give me the book. I know it's Hebrews. It's from the book of Hebrews, by the way. You just give me the chapter number. All I want is to hear the number where it is found. Okay? Here we go. Rest for the people, team one. Team four. That is correct. 50 points for team one. Okay, next. Things cannot be shaken. Team three. Team 12. 12 is correct. 50 points. Going right on. Hold your applause till the end of the round. Moses was faithful. Team four. Hebrews 3, 50 points for team 3. Team 4, sorry. Okay. Last days. Team 3. Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1 is correct, 50 points. And the final question in this category? Milk. Team 1. Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5 is correct. Okay. All right. After, after round 1, what do we have? Uh, team 1 has 100 points. Uh, team three has 100 points. Team four has 50. Okay. All right. Yes. Yes. Um, you said 25 points, but you were giving 50 for everybody. It's 25. Cut that in half. <laughs> Cut that in half. You have 50, 50, and 25. All right. Sorry. Right. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Should we give them a thousand bonus points? No, no, no. All right. Next category. Who did that? All right. I will tell you what they did. 
You tell me who they are. This person blessed Abraham. Team two. That is correct. 50 points. This person was not found. Enoch. Enoch was not found. Why? Because God took him. Okay, next question. This person said, today if you hear team one. Moses. That is incorrect. This person said, today, team four. That is incorrect. This person said, today if you hear his voice. Two seconds left. Okay. I stumped. I understand where those questions came from. Is it David because it's in Psalms? It's the Lord. The Holy Spirit. It says in Hebrews, the Holy Spirit said. Okay. So, that's you lost points. Sorry. Okay, next question. Here we go. This person sprinkled the book. Team one. That is correct. 50 points. This built, uh, this person built an ark. Team four. No. No, that is correct. Okay. All right. It's moving fast here. Hold off on the score. You got the total, but we will wait for the next round here. This round is places please. All right. 75 points per correct answer. I will describe a place. You tell me where or what it is. Okay? Are you ready? Here we go. Question number one. What country did the Israelites come out of? Team four. Ah. That is incorrect. What? Team three. Egypt, that is correct. What country did the Israelites come out of? 75 points for team three. Next question, places, please. The walls fell at team two. Jericho. That is correct. The walls fell at Jericho. <laughs> Moving on, question number three. This is the place where the Egyptians yes, struck. Yes. Team four? Red Sea. The Red Sea, I, that is correct. I like to protest that. Why is that? You, you read like three words and they like six. Team before you gave any. Okay, we, okay, I meant to say the final decision is always with the judge here, uh, with me, and, and sometimes that happens. We know that from Bible people. <laughs> you hope that they let you keep they keep talking, right? Okay, here we go. Next question. I will look at my at my thing here a little closer. Okay. This is another name for the heaven three. Answer, please. That is incorrect. I'll start again. Uh, one, this, okay? Mount Zion, that is correct, okay? 75 points for team one minus 75 right here, okay? Last one in this, in this category. Listen closely. This is the place where Jesus suffered, team four. Calvary, that is incorrect. This is the place. Outside the camp. Outside the camp is the correct answer. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so minus 75 plus 75. All right. We'll give you a second. You got total for me or? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have total tomorrow morning. <laughs> Just give me a minute. Okay. All right. I will explain the next category while he's totaling. All right. All right. This is the easy one. All of faith. These are questions from Hebrews 11. Wait, are, you, are you going on? No, I'm waiting to. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is 100 points each. All right. This is the hall of faith. We should have people in the audience answer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. All right, team one. As, as it stands, after three rounds, team one, 175. <laughs> team 
Power. Sarah. Sarah. How to conceive. Next question. Who was it that offered a more Abel. Abel is correct. A more excellent sacrifice. How many women are mentioned? Two. Two. Three. That is incorrect. How uh, I'm going to start here. Wait, okay. I, I have to hit this button before you can buzz in, and I'm not going to read if someone buzzes right away. Okay, number one. Two. Two. Okay, you want another question? How many women are mentioned by name in Hebrews 11? Okay. That was the question that he just got. That's correct. Okay. Wait, you got that right. So they got it wrong, and he got it right. Team two got it wrong, and team one got it right. Next question, the Hall of Faith. Who was looking, waiting for a student? Elder, uh, team one. Abraham. Abraham was looking, waiting for a student with foundation. That's your third one. Okay, yes. that's your third one in this round. You're out. Here goes. What two things is faith described at? Team four. That is correct. Okay. We'll hold off on the scores till this round. All right? Okay, we're down to three rounds left. This is names and titles and descriptions of Jesus in the book of Hebrews. Some of these, let me tell you, some of these, because versions can have different answers. I've got all the correct answers here. So if you get one of the correct ones, um, but keep in mind, there are specific from verses. Because there's verses that say different things about Jesus. You have to get the one that's from that passage. I've got the correct, you have to give me the correct answer that I have here. It's going to be a name, title, or description of Jesus. So I'm going to read a question. I'm going to put blank. Okay? And then you're going to fill in that blank. All right? Everyone's able to answer it. And here we go. 150 points. Jesus was made perfect through suffering. He is called. Offer of away. That is correct. Uh, author was, was one of the answers. Okay. Jesus passed into through the heavens is called Team One. Son of God. That is correct. <laughs> Your throne, O oh, One. God. Okay. Correct. <laughs> he became the team one. Wait, uh, No, not on one person. It was two and one. That is correct. Okay. And then finally, last question. You are out. You, you can't buzz. Um, Jesus is the blank of our faith. Team four. That is incorrect. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to hit the button and I hit it. One, two, three. Team two. Author and perfect. Author and perfect. Perfect. That's correct. Okay. All right. Very good. That was 150 points. We've got two rounds left. We will give you a moment to add up the score. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm here. 
<laughs> Ten questions left. Now remember, you add up the scores tonight plus tomorrow. So you've got another shot if you didn't quite get there tonight. Right? All right. All right. This is a little more challenging, maybe. This is worth 200 points. If you get it wrong, you lose 200. I will get, where'd that come from? I will give you a phrase. You, from Hebrews, you tell me the Old Testament passage. Now, some of those Old Testament passages encompassed a few verses. So if you get the, the, the verses that it ranged, the range, I will give it to you. Okay? But you have to give me the Old Testament book, chapter, and verse. Okay? And I will give you a little bit of a range because some of them in our study sheets were were arranged. Okay? Oh yes, points. You have it? Yes. All right, here we go. Um, Team one has one thousand points. Team two has two hundred and twenty-five. Team three has one seventy-five. And team four has fifty. Here's here's where you make up some points. You ready? All right. Yeah. Where'd that come from? <laughs> You're thrown over. Team three. <laughs> Minus 200. I'm going to click right here. Go. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I didn't hit the right button. Go. Team one. Psalm 45, Psalm 45, 6 is correct. Team one. All right, next question. Here goes. Moses was faithful in all. Team one. Numbers 12, 7. Numbers 12, 7 is correct. Next question. This is the blood of the Testament covenant. Team four. Two seconds. Answer, please. Nine. Okay, I'm going to start again. I'm going to read it again from the beginning. There's some buzzes right here. I'm starting. This is the blood of the Testament covenant which God commanded you. You can consult, remember. Team one. That is incorrect. This is the blood of the New Testament covenant which God commanded you. Any takers? No one wants to lose 200 points. All right. The answer was Exodus 24 8. Okay. Next question. Here we go. Yet once more, I will shake Team 3. Answer, please. Song. Incorrect. <laughs> Start again. Right. Team four. I got two. Correct. Yes. All, right. All right. Last question in this round. 200 points. Here it is. You are a priest for a Team one. Psalm 110, verse four. That is correct. Okay. All right. So, for the scores, teams one way is way ahead. You all need to catch up. There we go. <laughs> Moving on. Are you ready? This is back to the basics. Back to the basics. Questions from the book of Hebrews. Listen carefully because you better hear the whole question. These aren't like the other ones. Jesus was perfected, made perfect through what? Team four. Suffering. Suffering is correct. Where is Jesus seated? Team one. At the right hand of God. That is correct. Next question. Three times we are told not to do this to our hearts. Team four. Uh, 
Answer? That is incorrect. Starting again. Team two. <laughs> Do not harden your hearts. That is correct. Okay. Two questions left. All right? This is a multiple part answer. Some may be. Maybe this question is. What three things is the word of God said? Keep two. Living and active, sharper than any two edges, for piercing the division of soul and of That is correct. <laughs> and the last question in round one. What did Jesus love and hate in one night? What? In one night. He loved righteousness and hated wickedness. That is correct. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll give the scorekeeper 20 minutes to total up the score. <laughs> minute, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Stay up. Stay up by your table there. Okay. Now, who is coming back tomorrow at 8, 10 in the morning? Let's see your hands. We should have about eight people here. Well, you all come back if you're under Children are watching here, I suppose. Okay, so 8.10 tomorrow morning. All right. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. We have to get a picture. As soon as we get done with this, we'll very quickly come to the front. We want to get a picture of everyone here tonight. We'll do it really quick. It won't take long. After we move all this stuff out of the place. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, team one has 1,900 points, 1,900 points. Team two has 720. Five hundred. Three is minus two point. Oh, you can't go minus. Where is he going? Zero. 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 But yeah. uh, if you can get second, then you're doing better in the rankings. So. Okay, good job, everybody. So, thank you all. Uh, stay up there or move around here. Everybody come up really quick. Let's just get a quick picture here. Watch the chords. Okay. Can you take a picture? Yes, I'm going to take the picture right here. Everybody, go stand somewhere up there. I'm going to take a we got a good wide range, so everyone standing there, some on the floor, you know, in front, just, just on the floor. Come on up there. Yeah. 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 That's why I'm doing the night one tomorrow, because I'm going to get everybody out. I don't usually get in the front row of pictures, but when they're in the I appreciate you joining the Hello, <laughs> Do you see you in there? No. You're beside me. Right here. I see you now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. Is everybody ready? Can you see the can you see the camera? I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna sit over here and I got this little pin and I press the button it snaps. for Sundays and uh, and then after that we'll see you tomorrow morning if you are in the test 810 if you're not trying to ride by around 845 we want to start at nine o'clock sharp okay I'm not sure how you want to handle driving